Previously on Death Comes to Town. Usually there's 13 remotes. Now there's only 12. I think we just figured out what the murder weapon was. I'm ordering that Mayor Bowman's body be exhumed first thing in the morning. Oh, Marnie, I don't care if my husband did father that fat bastard. Coach Bowman's my dad. Now, here we go. You want to take our love to the next level? I accept. Oh! That's a new one. <gasps> this morning, the town of Shuckton was shocked by the news of a one-sided love affair between the town's gay coroner, Dusty Diamond, and the corpse of our late Mayor Bowman. Authorities suspected Dusty in this killing. That is, until police unearthed this video footage from the time of the murder. Less shockingly, a routine scientific test performed on one of the late mayor's hair follicles has revealed that he was never, ever, ever gay. Rumor has it that the disgraced coroner, Dusty Diamond, is set to meet with the new mayor at any moment. I'd like to be a fly on the wall for that one. Ah. Uh -huh. So, no explanation as yet, Dusty. I suppose people think I should fire you. But why? What did you do, really? Just fall for the man you were meant to be with? Well, that's true. And under my reign, Shuckton has become a much more progressive town, like Zurich or parts of Vancouver. Oh? You fell in love and had sex with a corpse. Why, it's we who should be applauding your act of bravery. It, it was brave, wasn't it? You are an everyday hero. Oh, I, I did nothing that anyone else wouldn't have done. No, Dusty. What? You are a hero. Oh, <laughs> of course, it doesn't matter that I had sex with a corpse. These things happen between men. Between great men. <laughs> hey, you. But <laughs> Wake up, pervert. The mayor wants to fire you. Uh, fudge. Marnie? Are you there? I have to find her. My after pants. Six hundred pounds. Thank you, T. Hester. Is he okay? You are fine. Except his intense pain. What happened? He just did make a noose from his IV tube and try to hang himself. What a clumsy kitty. Oh, Sam. He is um, longing for the sweet release of death. No, Hester. Don't say that. He does not do good. He does bad. Last night, we replaced his eyes. The other vets, they call him Robocat. Vets can be so cruel. 
You all go home and rest now. Well, I sort of sold my house so I could pay for all this excellent care. But at least I get to live with Buttonhole again. Oh. You am good boy. Who is am good boy? I am his good boy. You am his good boy. You am his good. Ladies and gentlemen, let's proceed with final summations. Mr. Prosecutor, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you so much, Your Honor. And may I say you look very handsome today. What a wonderful trial, Shucks, and give yourselves a hand. Come on. I'd like to thank my sponsors, Bingham Diet Whiskey, the smart way to get drunk. But now, it's time to get busy. Oh. What we have here is a murder. And a murderer! Two plus two equals? Don't answer. Four. Two plus two equals four. Murder equals murderer. Just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. Now, I think you all know the prettiest girl in Chuckton, Lana Lee. You've heard my learned colleague here go on ad nauseum about the fact that there's no murder weapon. There's no murder weapon. We don't have the murder weapon. He's a broken record. Because one of the things that could have killed the mayor is a broken record. See, although we don't have the actual murder weapon, any number of household items could have killed the mayor. Like the butt end of this kitchen gun. Oh. Bang! Oh. Bang you dead. Oh. Well, what about this ancient native weapon? Look familiar, Queen? Oh, oh. does it? I bet it do. Oh, what about this? Yeah. Now, why don't you take that for a test drive, Cream? Don't take it. Don't take it. Don't swing it. Oh. Now, how does that feel in your hand, son? Quite natural, really. Quite mm. natural, really. Mm. If in his hand it fits, you must convict. <laughs> oh, oh, that's my gavel. That's my gavel. Oh. Yes, Your Honor. Another crime solved. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen of Shuckton, are we gonna let the murder of our beloved mayor go unavenged? We, the people, gonna do the right thing. Woo! We, the people, rest my case. Follow that, Mr. Never Married. Marnie, where have you been? I've been up the tracks. Oh, my, Ricky, you're wearing those hip huggers I got you. Twirl around, twirl around, let me get a good look at you. Quit talking about my pants. Bigger things are sort of kind of happening. Oh, like what? Marnie, did you know that Coach Bowman was my dad? Of course I did. Of course I know who your father is. I'm not the type who sleeps around. What? Oh. Oh. Did I just tell you I'm your mom? <laughs> what? Oh, Ricky. I might as well tell you the whole truth. It'll be good to get it off my conscience. Ricky, it happened a long time ago, but it's the one thing I can clearly remember. 1973, the Vietnam War, which meant in Canada that there were handsome draft dodgers galore hitting on us pretty girls. It was the greatest night of my life, the night that April Wine came to town. So, did I run from the war to you? <laughs> <laughs> And then it became the sexiest night of my life. <laughs> Two months later, on the night a foot in cold water rode into town, I had news for Larry that would blow his mind. Groovy. Oh, yes. Groovy. Larry? 
What? Uh, I'm pregnant. Yeah? And I'm busy. I'm tenderly making love. So why don't you take care of that? And I'll take care of this. <laughs> so you put me up for adoption. It's a little worse than that. I tell you, the way they keep miniaturizing these things is just amazing. You ready? Well, yeah, she's ready. She told me she was ready in the car. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, just take a tick. Ready? You're golden. Good. And if anybody finds out about this, I'm gonna pull a hairy man. Huh? Listen, I gotta go. I'm off to see the Stampeders tonight. Oh. Now, would you look at that? Isn't that the darndest thing? Little fella's still alive. It's a miracle. Uh, we need to save it. We'll raise it till he's old enough to abandon. It'll be our secret. Yeah. Oh, who's got a stinky bum? Oh, let's get rid of that. So Doc Porterhouse raised the fetus oh. like you were his own. <laughs> rascal, hang on. Sleepy fetus, morn will meet us when the moon is tired. And as soon as you were old enough to be a baby, he put you up for adoption. <sighs> and well, you know the rest. I'm, I'm sorry you lost your dad, but at least you've got your mother. Vicky. Mr. Murray, it's your turn for summations, and Sam, let's keep it on the short side. Yes, Your Honor. I once made you a promise. I will now keep that promise. I trust you, Sam Murray. <laughs> Folks, I may not have fancy pre-recorded music. I may not even really like music that much. I certainly don't have a ritzy law degree. Come on. No, in fact, I have a simple law diploma from a community college that's still in the mail. But I do know what's true. Yes, it's true that my client was found with the mayor's blood on his hands. But let me tell you, that's pretty easy to do. I know it's not true that my client is a killer. We have no killer. We have no murder weapon. We have no witness. You know what we do have? Nada! Thank you very much. Why are we so quick to judge a man who has already been judged so harshly by his own fate? Do you want to hear about his beginnings? His father died during childbirth. Bar fight. He never knew his own mother. She took off before he was born. Who raised you, Krim? A pinball machine. Raised by a pinball machine. Lived in a dumpster. Survived on rats and broken cookies. He lived outside. No wonder he's an outsider. But aren't we all outsiders? Are we not a town of outsiders living in a nation? Founded by outsiders, we took his land away. So he turned predictably to germ gel to ease the pain. Smoked it like it was going out of style. But it never did, did it? No, not as such. 
germ gel, a white man's drug that we use like water to protect ourselves. Protect ourselves from what? From him? We do not need protection from him. Perhaps we need protection from ourselves. What is this country? What is sacred in our hearts? In the quiet place where we make our most important decisions, we all know the truth, that this proud man is guilty. You said guilty. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. No, I... Yeah. I, I said not guilty. Uh, no, I, I heard you say guilty. No, I said not guilty. That's ridiculous. I, I said not guilty. <laughs> Why would I say guilty? All right, look. How many people heard Sam say that Mr. Hollingsworth was guilty? I meant not guilty. Well, Sam... Yes, dear? Nothing. I just wanted to say mom. <laughs> Son? Yes? Same thing. <laughs> Ricky, you must be thirsty. I'm sure I have a juice box in my purse somewhere. Okay, let's see. <gasps> mom, what's that? Oh, something I picked up at the Bowman's. I guess I should have told you. This is the murder weapon. The murder weapon? Oh, Ricky, you must be so happy. We found it. We found it. I knew Marilyn was the murderer. Did she see you take it? Oh, no. I'm too fast for that one. We've got to go to the police. Right, right. Now, where did I park the car? I, I did park the car, didn't I, Ricky? Of course I parked it. Car! 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 All right, let's move on to the verdict. Ladies and gentlemen and transgender members of the jury... It is now time for you to deliberate this very, very difficult case. Now, I want you to weigh the evidence and the arguments put before you very carefully, and for no matter how long it takes until you have come to a unanimous verdict. And once you have, alert us and return to the courtroom. You are dismissed. Ooh. Look at that. Has the jury reached a verdict? I think they have. <gasps> what the hell is this? It's a teddy bear. It's the new way of saying guilty. Oh. Oh. Well. Guilty. <laughs> All right. I see no reason to delay these proceedings. I talked to the mayor last night. What I propose, Your Honor, is a very short life sentence, one that ends with death by natural causes. And what could be more natural than dying after an electrocution? I mean, I think it would be unnatural to not die. Yes, you make a good point. I hear the TV. We've decided to reinstate the death penalty within the town limits of Shuckton. And so, without any further ado, I condemn you, Krim Hollingsworth, to death. <laughs> oh, my 160, brother. That's bad, eh? Pretty bad. Your Honor, who do I talk to about my last meal? This is Corinda Gablechuk, live outside the courthouse where, just seconds ago, the defendant, Krim Hollingsworth, was found not not guilty, meaning guilty. Which makes this reporter wonder, how could a baby, once so full of promise, now be sentenced to death? Clearly, it's the circle of life, a circle which includes babies being born and then bludgeoned, and people having one night stands and than having babies. And now, this mighty circle of life has caught up with me. And I have a decision, a life-altering one, that I have to make. And um, so, should I keep this baby or not? Why don't you decide, Jackson? 
Can we turn off the graphic? Is the graphic up? For keep it. Press one. For don't keep it. For no kid. For a skin of my soul. Here it is. I'll drive. Okay, Ricky. Okay. All right, you drive, and don't get you in. Okay. Coming, Ricky. Coming over. Just a little help. I'll get you in. I'll get you in. I'll get you in. Get you in. I'll get you in. No can do. Let's rock. Let's rock, Ricky. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh my God, I'm gonna kill you. Should we stop? No, keep going. Keep going. That's it. Yeah. Oh! oh, that's the spot! Oh! Oh! Don't stop or I'll kill your wife in front of your kids. Oh. Yeah. Oh. oh, do you wanna get that? I think we should take a break anyway. Oh, get that. Get that. Wow. Is that actually steam coming off of it? Oh, yeah. You got asthma? Go ahead, it's good for it. Yeah. <laughs>